Hey guys, you got Crave here, and recently I've been focusing on the Feral spec. Right after the completion of Nathrio Normal, I thought I'd go melee DPS for the heroic runs. So here's a guide for the cat form of druids. Just like the resto guide I did some, well, some time ago, this is still meant for those who are a bit new to the game or for people who are curious about going feral for the current endgame. We'll go over important things like when to refresh damage over time effects, but quickly glance over things like snapshotting. Now, the format is still going to be the same. You can pick the section of the guide that you are most interested in via the timestamps you are seeing right now, or you can also check out the description box for links. If you don't jump into a specific time or topic, I'll start with some of the generic tips. Now, I really just have four tips for going for the feral spec. Now, the first one is while you're leveling and unless you want to AOE huge numbers of mobs, then you should really get used to the cat form. It's an easy enough spec to level in, so really just stick with it so you get fully immersed in the role. The second thing is that you also have to understand your goals while in the feral spec. I mean, as with the resto spec guide, it's fine to pick whichever covenant you want or whichever secondary stat priorities after intellect. If you are all about min-maxing, then your covenant choice and secondary stats will matter. You might see it well, you might see it to become more important when you start doing heroic runs, or if your group is just at about the border of the gearing requirements for the content. So only then will the, those things matter. The third thing is that your damage numbers will vary greatly. While Ferocious Bite, one of your abilities, is a very, very significant portion of your overall damage in single target rotations, cats are still in part bleed specs. Plus, there is a five point requirement to get the most out of Ferocious Bite. So, there is some ramp up time involved for the portion of your damage. So, this really isn't a tip, but more of a reminder of how you should put out damage or what your damage is like. And the fourth general tip is that in terms of mechanics, and I think as with any other spec or any other role, knowledge of fights is really important. Raid leads don't just say know the fights for shallow reasons. Now being a melee spec, knowing the mechanics to a certain extent helps your positioning. After all, you lack the flexibility of a ranged damage dealer. Let's keep it simple for stat priority. If you're not after high level content or the pacing of your runs is relaxed, just look for items that give you more agility. And with this gearing goal, it's very straightforward. Just look for the items or the gear with the higher item level. Now, if it becomes important, the secondary stat to push is crit, which is based on recommendations by many droids I've encountered in the game, my own sim, and because I do like that the Primal Fury passive you have works like the Seal Fate passive uh, from Assassination Rogues, which grants additional combo points when you crit with a combo building ability. Again, stat priority is all about the main stat. If you are running a hectic pace or your team is often at the edge of gearing requirements for content, then secondary stats will matter. For talents, let's quickly go over the options you have. Now, for row number one, it's really just a toss up between Sabretooth and Predator. Now, Saber is just great because it enhances Ferocious Bite and it reduces the need to manage your RIP ability, which is your main dot ability or damage overtime ability. You can switch up to Predator for quick dying adds, but I'm often lazy, so I just stick with Saber. Now for row number two, and by default, I just go with Wild Charge because the leap ability for cats is useful. Now you can go with Tiger Dash if maybe you're not running Night Fey, which grants soul shape. Now, Tiger Dash is also good if you find that fights often line up with the need for a movement boost where the regular dash just can't cut it. For row number three, it's really just balance. That additional range is really a big deal. It often means being able to deal damage even if there's bad stuff on the ground in front of you. Now, of course, it's still just a five yard limit, but oftentimes that five yard thing is just very much enough to make sure you're able to do your job as a damage dealer. Now, row number four is most likely Mighty Bash for me, and I, that's just for me. Even with when Shadowlands was new, I don't recall ever trying the other selections for PvE. The ability to stun trash mobs that have abilities you can interrupt is just gold. I mean, it's really just important. Now, oftentimes mobs can be the cause of major annoyances, especially as you know, you're just working your way up to a boss in Nathria, so really being able to hold off one cast is just a blessing. In the fifth row, I think Soul of the Forest is a solid pick. 
It helps with energy management and buffs your combo point spenders. Not a very interesting talent, but it is a very good pick. Now, I don't like row number 6, but Brutal Slash is great for single target, while Wrath is great for AoE. It's really an AoE row, and it's probably why I don't like it, but Brutal Slash is great due to its noticeable damage even on single targets. Its reduced energy cost is also great, especially when you want to mix up attacks for the Blood Talents talent. The last row is between Frenzy and Blood Talents. Now, Talents is the most consistent in terms of overall damage dealt in a fight, and I really default to this in raids. This reminds me of Windwalker's DPS style, well, a little bit, which doesn't really fit the Druid theme, but this is better than the regrowth option we had before. Now, admittingly, I find Feral Frenzy to be the more fun talent. It's bursty and it adds a bleed effect. Now also as I mentioned much much earlier, snapshotting is a mechanic that will glance over. So what this basically means is that your rip is buffed by blood talents and this means that you make sure that you let it last as long as possible, this damage over time ability, before you refresh it. If it becomes too complicated to track, just try to let the buffed ripped ability stay for as long as possible or follow the refresh time limit that we'll be discussing later in the abilities section. Now quickly on the topic of the Covenant, I really just suggest Night Fae, not only because it fits the theme of Druids, but because Convoke the Spirits is really just so bursty and flexible. It also acts as a combo point building ability, but it doesn't guarantee a full 5 points at times. Also, Soul Shape, even though you are a Druid, is still a very, very useful ability. However, if you're really just strictly gunning for normal raids or you're basically very relaxed in terms of the pacing of your running of content than any Covenant will do. It's always best to go for the Shadowlands faction that you enjoy the most. It's going to be a terrible experience running around, using abilities, or being part of a Covenant whose perks and themes you don't appreciate. So really, if you're just running for normals, choose the Covenant you want. Now for the spells rundown or the abilities rundown, let's go over the spells that are really just important to being a feral druid. I'll skip over some spells that I've already mentioned in the talent section and other skills that might not be as useful. Now when you have the time though, this means that you really just have to go over all of your abilities to get familiar with them. So let's start with utility-like spells. The first one is Cyclone, so this is really just a 6 second CC that doesn't really break on damage. So you basically cast this on a mob that you want to sort of quote unquote remove from combat. Now the second spell is Entangling Roots, so it basically just roots a target in place. Now the effect can break depending on the amount of damage you deal to the target. Now Hibernate is a third utility spell that is basically just a sleep effect on a beast or dragonkin creature. Now. One point of damage just breaks the effect. The fourth one is Rebirth. Now, this is basically just a battle rest spell or a battle resurrection spell. Now, it's really important that for this one that you really just coordinate with your raid leader. This is really a key ability that you share with a few other classes and specs, so always check with your raid lead on who should get this benefit. Now, I'm adding regrowth here in the utility section, even though you normally will heal yourself so that uh, your healer doesn't have to worry about you so much. But one thing you can do for regrowth, especially when it's an instant cast, is that you cast it on someone else to basically just help out fellow healers. I mean, other healers. Now, remove corruption is basically a simple spell. It removes any curse or poison effects. So if you're asked to remove an effect like that, you do so. Next is Skull Bash. Now, this is really just important because it is an interrupt to mobs or spells that you can interrupt. And one benefit to Skull Bash is that you don't have to be in melee range. Uh, you will automatically charge the target, provided you're not too far off, and stun the target. Another ability is Soothe. Now, this basically just removes any enrage effects. Now, this is one ability that can sometimes make things a whole lot easier. Casting this, for example, on the Enraged Gorgons in Halls of Atonement can make life easier for your tank if the Enraged mechanic triggers. Stampeding Roar is really just a very, very useful utility spell. It basically just makes sure that everyone moves faster so you can get out of the bad. Uh, this spell helps with that. Or you can reach your targets faster. Uh, this, also, this spell also helps with that. Now, Typhoon is basically just a knockback spell, so they also daze targets that can be dazed for about 6 seconds. 
We're now moving on to the damage abilities or damage skills section, which is really just the meat of what you're supposed to be doing in raids. So the first ability is called Ferocious Bite. And I mentioned this earlier, this is your main non-damage over time ability. So if you use meters to track your damage output, you'll find that this is always the top damage skill. Rake, Shred, and Brutal Slash build up to dish out this damage skill. If all your dots have a reasonable amount of time remaining, this is your dump or your ability where you dump your combo points. Rake is your combo builder ability and is basically your opener from stealth when you start a fight. Now this is really just meant to be maintained on your target at all times. Now if you're worried about the pandemic effect, you have to refresh this damage over time ability when there are 4 or less seconds left. Now the next damage ability is Shred, so it's also a combo point building ability or just a combo builder. Now this deals increased damage to bleeding targets. Now it goes without saying though that you have to maintain all dots on your target, so if you do that, basically Shred is stronger. Rip is basically your main damage over time skill. Now the duration of this skill is extended if you take the Sabertooth talent, which I highly highly recommend you do unless you really just have a feel for Predator. But this is the second finisher that your Rake, Shred, and Brutal Slash will build up to. So if it's important for you to track, then you have to refresh this dot when there are seven or sec less, less than seven seconds left. Now. For your last damage over time ability, which is also for your AOE, it's called Thrash. It's also a combo builder and uh, it deals an initial AOE damage along with a damage over time for all targets affected. Now, you basically only use this in AOE scenarios and or when there are basically multiple targets. If you find yourself often dealing with three or more adds, then I really suggest that you also pick up the Primal Wrath talent. As a Feral Druid, you also have two abilities that modify your damage output. Now, the first one is called Berserk. Now, it's an offensive cooldown for 20 seconds. Now, what this does is that it modifies Rake and Shred to behave as if you always cast them from stealth. Now, this is only within the 20 second window. Now, it also gives a chance to refund combo points when activating finisher skills. The second damage modifier, and of course, I just want to say, of course, I forgot to mention is that Berserk is on a three minute cooldown. So you want to time it on the best window possible where the most damage is needed. Now, Tiger's Fury is also an offensive cooldown or a modifier to damage, but it's often up more often. So what this does is basically it restores energy. It also increases overall damage for 10 seconds. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this also is affected by the snapshot mechanic. So what this basically means is that if you buff a certain ability through your um, Tiger's Fury, then make sure that bleed ability stays up on the target for as long as possible. Now, if it becomes too complicated, like I mentioned earlier, just stick to the refresh times as I mentioned in the ability section. Now, as a Feral Druid, you also have some abilities that help you to survive. So the first one is called Bark Skin. Now, it really just reduces damage for 8 seconds. So it's not a strong damage reduction ability, but it is still useful. And it can be used while a crowd control effect is on your Druid. Now, this is something you might want to use for more frequent boss abilities or raid abilities or raid mechanics like... Uh, for example, the uh, Dark Recital mechanic on the Council of Blood fight. Um, if you have to run around and you maybe you're not sure where the pathing goes or where your partner may be going, then, you know, feel free to use Bark Skin. The second ability, and this one has the longer cooldown, is called Survival Instincts. Now, it is a 50% damage reduction window for 6 seconds. Now, being your stronger defensive CD on a 3-minute cooldown, you might want to use this only on the mechanics or situations where it's really, really needed. And for the last section of this guide, it's really just about add-ons and macros. Now, in terms of the add-ons, um, the mainstay is really just ELV UI. It's the main UI replacement I have for World of Warcraft. I don't ever recall using the standard UI for WoW. I just can't stand it. So it is ELV UI. Now, in terms of meters that I use for healing or damage dealing, I use details right now. It's my mainstay meter. And it's really just useful. It's full of information that helps me to learn what I'm doing. And the third thing I would recommend is maybe tell me when. It helps me to track abilities, cooldowns, and procs. And it's also easy to, well, it's not the easiest to configure, but it is very, very configurable. I don't know if that's a proper word for it. And in terms of macros, I'm showing right now the sample macros that I can suggest to you guys. Uh, the 
regrowth macro is just a sample. It's a help macro, quote unquote help macro that I carried over from my resto guide. And the second macro is just for skull bash. So basically, so that if you set a focus target, you basically are able to stun or interrupt that target if there's a call out to do so. So really just sample macros you can just modify or I encourage you to do some research. And that's it for this guide on how you deal damage as a feral druid. Now, if you're starting out with the Druid class or you're thinking about switching over to a melee DPS role, then I hope this guide really just helps you out. Anyways, thanks for checking this out, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.